The first set of phrasal verbs in our lesson is going to contain the word up. Listen up. Listen up. When someone says, listen up, it's a command that means pay attention. Now, this kind of command can be used in a polite way. You know, you're just trying to get everyone's attention in the room because what you're about to say is going to be very important. You're going to start with, listen up, everyone. This is how we're going to solve the problem. So you're about to say a plan. So you're letting everyone know to pay attention. And that's what it means when someone uses the phrasal verb, listen up. Pass up. Pass this up. Pass this up. When you pass up something or you pass up an opportunity or you pass up an option, it means you decline something. If your coworker comes by your office and says, hey, would you like to come to lunch with us today? You might say, hey, I actually have to pass up that today because I am way too busy. This just means like you're declining very politely. To pass up something can be used in a polite way or it can be used to say that you kind of regret declining something or not taking an opportunity. Maybe you regret passing up traveling while you were young. So now you have many responsibilities. You have a family, maybe a job, a husband or a wife, and you don't have the opportunity to travel as much anymore, but you regret passing up the opportunity to travel while you were young. This means you decline the opportunity. You did not take full advantage of the time where you had more freedom to travel. So you passed up an opportunity. Hopefully you know what it means to wake up in the morning this is a very common way in English to say that we become awake, we get out of bed. I woke up this morning and I made myself breakfast. This means, you know, it's the time that you start doing things in the morning. But we can also use this phrasal verb, wake up. We can say we are waking up to a fact or waking up to some sort of idea or realization. Some people like to say that we don't have a problem with pollution or climate change but then they see the changes in weather or they see that the water near their house is polluted and they wake up to the fact that they need to help conserve our resources. They need to help, you know, keep the planet clean. They're waking up to the fact that there is a problem in the environment. So when you wake up to a fact or you wake up to an idea, it means before you either weren't aware of something or you were kind of denying that it was real, you are being ignorant. And when you wake up to a fact or you wake up to an idea, it means you kind of accept the idea now. So wake up to something means to realize something. If you are like me in the morning, it takes you a while to perk up. And sometimes it takes a big cup of coffee to sort of perk up. So when something perks you up or you perk up, it means you become energized. So coffee often perks up people. Or if you say something that is kind of interesting to someone or gets them excited, you can say, well, that really perked you up. So to perk up means to become energized or sort of lively and excited. Sometimes if you are at a party and everyone's kind of feeling, you know, like it's a boring environment. Remember, you can't feel bored, but the environment can feel bored or boring. You might say, all right, everyone, we need to perk up. We need to start dancing. Let's turn on some music. Let's get some food and some drinks going. This just means let's start to energize the environment. Let's have high energy and excitement in the room. Perk up. You need to perk up. A common phrase in English is pick up and go. So the phrasal verb to pick up and go, the whole phrase together, means to leave. So sometimes if you are ready to leave at any moment, you could say at any moment we can pick up and go. This means, you know, we can get all of our items gathered very quickly and leave. Oftentimes when people live in an area where there is war nearby, they need to be ready to pick up and go at any time. And this can be a terrifying reality for people when they need to move very quickly out of their homes. They just need to pick up and go. That means literally they just take everything that they can hold in their hands and they leave or they move to a new country. Now this phrasal verb pick up and go doesn't necessarily always have a negative context or connotation to it. It can just mean like we are ready to leave at any moment. So sometimes if you're waiting for a call, you know, someone wants you to meet them at a restaurant or meet them somewhere, you could say, yeah, any moment I'm ready to pick up and go. I just need my friend to call me and say that she's ready for us. When you stick up, 
for someone, it means you defend them. Stick them up! Oftentimes, we teach our children that it is important to stick up for the little guy or stick up for someone who's often being bullied. So if a big group of kids are making fun of one person, maybe because, you know, they don't have very nice shoes or they speak differently, they look differently, something that you shouldn't bully someone for, you should teach your child to stick up for that person to defend them. So you say, you know, leave them alone. You know, they can't control this. I'm sticking up for this person. If you are in a meeting and someone is being criticized and they weren't even at the meeting, you could say, hey, I have to stick up for Judy. She's not even here to defend herself. So I'm going to stick up for her. I'm going to defend her. So we use this phrasal verb to stick up for someone or something to mean that we are going to defend him or her or it. We use the phrasal verb to pull up to say that we are going to stop. So oftentimes this phrasal verb is pretty much almost always used when we're talking about being in a car driving. So let's say that you are at a drive through fast food restaurant in the United States. Once you order your food, usually the person speaking in the loudspeaker says, can you pull up to the first window? Meaning that's where you're going to pay for your food. And sometimes, especially if you're going to McDonald's, they have two windows. If the first window doesn't have someone working in it, they'll say, I'll actually have you pull up to the second window. So this means you drive and you stop at the second window. In the United States, some people drive their children to school and the carpool line is what we call it, where everyone gets dropped off at the school. It can be quite busy, so it's important to pull up as far as you can, stop your car, so pulling up and stopping, and you let your kid out. So we don't say pull up and stop. We say, I'm just going to pull up to the door. This just means you're going to drive to the door and then stop. So you don't actually have to say pull up and stop. We know what you mean when you say pull up to something. It means you're going to drive and stop at the location. Pull up, pull up. To lift someone up. If you lift someone up, it could mean you literally pick them up, but today's phrasal verb that I'm going to teach you means that you're going to encourage someone. Oftentimes, this phrase to lift someone up means just to kind of lift their spirits up, to encourage them, to make them feel confident and happy. We often say it in English, when someone is feeling down and sad, it's important to lift them up. It doesn't mean literally to pick them up. It means to start encouraging them making them feel happy and confident again. Sometimes we describe media like books and movies and television shows that are very motivating as uplifting. This movie was very uplifting. That means it had a motivational story, a very happy story, and it encouraged you even after you watched the whole movie. An important phrasal verb if you're ever driving in the United States is to fuel up. Go ahead, Joey, fuel up. So this phrasal verb to fuel up can mean the exact same thing as saying I'm going to refuel, but fuel up is way more casual and I would say it's definitely a bit more common for people to say, hey, let's fuel up the car before we go on our trip. This just means let's make sure we have a full tank of gas or gasoline. We can also use this phrasal verb when we're talking about eating food to give ourselves energy. So oftentimes runners like to fuel up with something like a banana or something very calorie heavy before they go for a long run or maybe the day before they're planning on running a long race. They need to fuel up their body. This just means they need to eat a lot of food that's going to give them energy. To shape up. Seriously, Ted, shape up. So this is, again, a very casual phrasal verb. If you're telling someone you need to shape up, it means you need to improve. So your studying really needs to shape up. This means that you need to study more. You need to improve the amount of time that you study for something because clearly you're not doing a good enough job if someone's telling you to shape up. Oftentimes, this could be like a word of encouragement to someone. Hey, it's okay. You can shape up. You can do better on the test next time. This just means like you can improve. Now that we've learned some phrasal verbs starting with up, let's talk about phrasal verbs that have down in them. Oftentimes in English and a lot of other languages as well, 
we associate being up as being happy and excited and down as being sad and depressed. Our first phrasal verb is to bring someone down, which if you didn't already know, we can probably guess that this means to depress someone, make them sad, discourage them. We'll bring you down. Maybe someone is really excited about going to a concert on Friday night and you say, well, not to bring you down, but it's supposed to rain and the concert is outdoors. So I'm guessing it's going to get canceled. So you could say, wow, you really brought me down by saying that. This just means you made me depressed, you discouraged me, you made me sad. You're giving them bad news that's making them feel bad. And they were up, they were happy before. So you can also say, I'm going to bring down the mood. This just means overall by saying this bad news or, you know, saying something that's sad, it's going to make everyone a bit sad as well. Even though they were happy before, you're bringing down the moon. You're making everyone more sad. This is a super common phrase, so make sure to add that one to your vocabulary to bring down the mood. A very similar phrase to this one, this phrasal verb, is to put someone down. Instead of saying you're going to bring someone down, you're going to put them down. And the difference between this is when you put someone down, you're going to belittle them or you're going to sort of insult them. Maybe you're talking about your friend and you say, she is terrible at managing money. She spends way too much money. Your friend might say to you, you know, not the friend you just insulted, a different one might say, wow, you're really putting her down right now. This means you're talking very poorly about her. So it's kind of like you're insulting, you're talking about the person like they are not very competent and not very skilled when you put them down. And when we want to say that someone is belittling, they said something insulting, you can call what they said a put down. That means it's not a kind comment. It's not helping anyone. To take down something can mean to physically, you know, lift an object from up high and bring it down. So I need to take something down from the shelf. But we also use this phrasal verb less literally to mean we are going to dismantle something. So oftentimes we talk about governments, we talk about big organizations or companies, and if they are going to be ruined or dismantled, we are saying that they are going to be taken down. And for instance, people say that the power grid and the internet in the United States is susceptible. This means it could be harmed by a hacker on their computer or something like that. So the power grid could be taken down by a hacker. This is a very scary example, but it just means that if someone you know wanted to do something very bad and evil, they could take down the power grid in the United States. Take it down or we take you down. Sometimes when there is a lot of bad news, a lot of bad articles coming out about a certain celebrity or politician, people will accuse the media of trying to take them down. This means, you know, trying to ruin or dismantle their reputation by releasing all this bad news and bad things about the person. This next phrase verb is definitely more informal, but it is very useful to know. If someone says that there is a shakedown or they call something a shakedown, it means that someone is extorting money. So this is often very illegal and you could call it a scam and very bad. So for instance, if there is a gang and they are making people pay in order not to have, you know, their things stolen or violence upon them, you can say it's a shakedown. So they are extorting money in order to not be harmed. It's a shakedown, excuse me. Oftentimes if you're traveling to a country and their customs makes you pay, you know, to get certain things into the country that doesn't really seem like it should be a thing, you can say that you got shook down at customs in the airport. And this happens in a lot of corrupt countries, you know, countries that have corrupt governments, I should say. One more very informal phrasal verb for you is to fork down. If you say that someone has forked down a plate of food, it means they ate the food very, very quickly. You often use this phrasal verb when someone is very hungry and they eat fast. You could say, wow, you really forked that down. This just means you ate it very quickly, like with your fork. Now let's move on to some phrasal verbs using the word out. Again, these phrasal verbs are going to be very important for your regular conversations 
just your everyday conversations with friends, family, coworkers. So pay attention to these phrasal verbs. I, again, they're super important. So use that PDF that's linked below. It's free. You'll get it to your email just by subscribing to my email list so that you can keep studying these. The first phrasal verb with the word out is to leave out. What you leave out. So if you leave out something, it means you omit it. Let me give you an example to make sure that you understand exactly how this phrasal verb is used. If you are telling a story to your friend and you're like, yeah, I was late yesterday because my dog got sick and vomited all over the place. Your friend might say, yeah, you could have just left out that detail and told me that your dog was sick. I didn't want to hear about your dog vomiting all over the place. So then later you're telling a different friend this story and you're like, I'll leave out, you know, the details, but my dog got sick yesterday. Just means you're omitting some of the story to make the story less gross. Sorry if that story did gross you out. You can leave out a person and you can say a person felt left out. This just means they did not feel included in a group that they felt like they should belong to. Maybe if you're a writer, someone might read a story that you have written and they think that some of the story is a little bit boring. They might say you should leave out this part because it wasn't really important to the story and it was quite boring. Or sometimes if you read a book and then you see a movie based on the book, you could say they left out a really important part of the book. That means they did not include it. They omitted that part of the book in the movie. If you tell someone to get out, you want them to exit. This is a command and this could be considered kind of rude. So be careful when you tell someone to get out. And we can also use get out to say retrieve something. So can you get out a pen? This means can you find a pen to use right now? Get is a really interesting verb and you can use this video that I'm going to link right here to understand how we use get more. But get out either means telling someone to exit or you can say I'm going to get out right now. This means you're going to leave the room or leave the building, whatever it might be. Or can mean retrieve something. Get out it. Get out. In the United States, when people quit school, we say that they are dropping out. Before you dropped out. So to drop out of something is to quit. We can use this when we're talking about school. You dropped out of high school. You dropped out of college. Or we can use this when someone has quit a competition. I dropped out of the race or I dropped out of the competition. This just means you quit because either you were injured, you couldn't finish, or something went wrong. Stay out. So stay out. This phrasal verb can mean that someone needs to not go in a certain area, so it can be used in the physical sense. Let's talk about how someone can stay out of something, meaning they avoid something. Maybe your two friends are arguing and you do not want to be involved in the argument, so you're going to stay out of the argument. So to stay out of something. Or another really common phrase with this phrasal verb is you can say, I'm going to stay out of your business. Sorry. This just means you're going to avoid whatever the person is doing because maybe it seems like there's going to be conflict or maybe you think what they're doing is illegal or just wrong in general. You're going to stay out of their business. This just means you're going to avoid being involved in what they're doing, you're not going to help them, you're not going to watch them, you're going to stay out of it and avoid it. A phrasal verb that means you are going to withdraw from something means you are going to back out. Now, oftentimes we use this phrasal verb to back out of a competition or to back out of a race. This means the race or the competition has not started yet. So you committed to doing it, but then you say, actually, I'm not even going to start, I'm going to back out. Before you start something, if you are going to quit and just not do it at the moment, you can say, I'm going to back out of it. Oftentimes when our electronics, our computers, our televisions, our appliances in our house, like our refrigerator, our oven, our microwave, when things stop working and they have electrical components to them, a phrasal verb that we like to use is we say they short out. Backup system shorted out! This phrasal verb means that the thing that is connected to the electricity 
is just not working at all and oftentimes it's completely unresponsive and dead as we can say yesterday my computer shorted out so i wasn't able to finish my project on the computer or i had a refrigerator but it shorted out last week so i need to go shopping this just means like it completely stopped working and usually if you say something shorted out it means that the electronic device is dead and there's not really a way to fix it our next set of phrasal verbs will focus on the word around the first phrasal verb on this list is to sneak around he's always sneaking around so this phrasal verb again it's more of a casual less formal phrasal verb if someone is sneaky around it means they are doing things secretively so it can literally mean they're moving very quiet around the house maybe someone is sneaking around your house and you don't hear them so all of a sudden you see them and they they scare you hopefully it's someone that belongs in your house not like a burglar or something or you know you can say oh, my cat is always sneaking around the house that means the cat moves so quietly it's secretly moving around another way we use this phrasal verb and i would say more commonly is when someone is doing things in secret maybe if the ceo of a company is secretly starting a new business and is going to leave their current company soon you could say they were sneaking around starting a new company that means they were doing things in secret they were doing these actions without anyone knowing what was going on so if you don't want to be noticed you should try to sneak around play around and mess around are two very similar phrasal verbs let's first talk about playing around were you playing around so sometimes if you are going to just do something for fun you could say we're just playing around right now this means whatever we're doing is not serious it's not official we are just doing something to have fun or just trying it to see if it works for instance you could say your soccer team is going to play around before the game starts this means they're going to just you know practice for fun not being serious and then once the game starts there's no more playing around it's serious time now mess around has more of a negative context around it as a phrasal verb so if someone says hey stop messing around it means whatever they're doing is not serious but they also consider it a waste of time you can say hey i'm, I'm just messing around and this isn't a super negative thing to say but it just means whatever you're doing is just not really a good use of your time you're messing around if you want to tell someone that they should not do something unless they're doing it the correct way because it could be dangerous you might say hey never mess around with knives or never mess around with fire this means you know don't use these things unless you're using them in a good kind of professional safe way otherwise you can get hurt we often say this to our children, don't mess around with that. I don't want you to break it. This means don't use it improperly. It's not a toy, whatever it might be. Quit messing around. A really common thing that we say in the United States when we are just going to loiter or just remain in a place, we don't really have a purpose there or we're just staying there for some extra time. We can say, I'm just going to hang around for a little bit. This means you're just kind of waiting, you're just kind of relaxing in an area. For instance, maybe you go and have a lunch with your friend and you guys are done eating, but you're just going to hang around at the table and have some conversation. So it means you don't really need to be at the restaurant anymore. You're done with your food, but you're just hanging out. You're just being in that spot. You can say we're hanging around. Maybe you are having a party and your friends are all about to leave but you want one friend in particular to stay a little bit longer even after everyone has left you can say to that friend hey i know everyone's leaving but just hang around for a few more extra minutes that means like there's nothing official for you to do right now but just be in this area stay here please let's move on to our phrasal verbs that contain a side so these phrasal verbs are really interesting and again super commonly used the first phrasal verb, which you may not have ever heard, is to cast aside something or cast aside someone. Cast him aside. So this phrasal verb is generally kind of a negative thing that happens. So if you have an old friend, but you don't really talk to them anymore because maybe you have a new friend who you think is a better friend, 
your old friend might feel a bit cast aside. So a equivalent word to cast aside is discarded, but we often use cast aside more frequently when people, you know, just feel like they are not involved in your life anymore. They feel like kind of bad that you're not being friends with them as much anymore. They feel cast aside. And this example of having something new and shiny and using that and not using the old thing anymore is a really common way we use this phrase, cast aside. So maybe you got some new shoes and someone says, well, what are you going to do with all your old shoes that you just cast aside? That means, you know, you're only using these new shoes now because they're new they seem really nice. And even though you have a bunch of other shoes, you just cast them aside and you don't wear them anymore. The next phrasal verb on this list is to set aside, which just means to reserve something. So it's much different than casting something aside. If you're casting something aside, you're just not using it anymore. It's almost like you're throwing it away. Maybe you're keeping it, but it's like you threw it away, basically. It doesn't have as much value for you anymore. If you are setting something aside, it still has value. You're just reserving it. You're saving it for later. So often at the end of summer, I go to the store and I buy all the discounted water shoes for my children, like Crocs. And I set them aside for the next summer. So this just means I reserve them. I keep them in a closet in my house because you get a good deal on the shoes at the end of the summer. And I usually buy, you know, a size up for my children, set them aside or reserve them for the next summer. Let me know if you do anything like this, maybe at the end of the winter and you set aside some sweaters for the next year or some people even buy Christmas gifts after Christmas and set them aside for the next year because they get a good discount, a good price for them. I'll set two tickets aside. If you guys have watched this far into this lesson, I want to make sure, one, you're subscribed to my channel, English with Kayla, and also that you have already downloaded the free PDF that goes right along with this English lesson so that you can keep studying these phrasal verbs you can keep recalling them because they're going to be so important for your everyday English conversations. If you like learning phrasal verbs, they're so useful to improving your English and just kind of leveling up your everyday speech. Make sure to visit one of the videos that are going to be on screen next. I have tons of really good phrasal verb lessons and they're not repeating the same phrasal verbs so you can keep increasing your vocabulary. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you again so much for watching. Goodbye.